Welcome to A Word from Our Outpost with Joseph and Crystal Gruber, a podcast for Catholic disciples who are wrestling to be missionary-minded in their normal, everyday lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to A Word from Our Outpost. I am Joseph Gruber, half the podcast, and that's the half that you have for this episode as well. I wanted to talk about something bouncing off of last week's episode about conversation starters. Last week I talked about the question, what have you been reading recently? And in the midst of recording the episode, I realized that conversation starters are something probably worth exploring. Both you and I, dear listener, have a lot to learn about them. So I want to talk a little bit about why we would want to start conversations, especially with strangers, how to do so, and and who are these strangers. So a little bit of why, how, and who today for you. Uh, So I'll begin with the why. Why would we talk to someone that we don't know? Well, there are a host of reasons. On a natural level, we might take some interest in them. We might have a kind of Curiosity, they exist, and we're not sure what what's going on with them, what brings them there. I think this is especially relevant. We were traveling last weekend, and we went to a parish that was utterly filled with young families, apparently with the mo- most popular mass for the young families in the area. And one thing that we noticed on leaving is that all of the young families, the the mothers and the fathers and the kids, they, they were all kind of circled together and uh, talked with each other. And I, myself, my wife, our children, we just sort of moseyed on through without any real interaction with anyone. And we're like, well, th- there was a missed opportunity there. There was a missed opportunity. Don't want to call out the parish. Don't want to make them feel bad. But we're pretty, pretty incredible people, at least my wife is, and well worth talking to. And so th- there's this, this sense that we don't know what we're missing out on until we've talked to the person, but we do know that we're missing out on the person. On a very early episode, we talked about the difference between studiousness and curiosity. Curiosity is what is sparked in us when we hate not knowing. Studiousness is what sparked in us when we love what we know already and would like to know more. So uh, on a natural level, you might be bothered by not knowing about someone, and that's not good. And that that tends toward viciousness because it feeds on a kind of hatred. Or you might be intrigued by the other person and want to know more about them. And that is sparked by something approximating love. So on a very natural level, someone exists in your presence and you take an interest in them because they are a human being, they are a mystery, they have behind their eyes a whole universe worth exploring. Um, Supernaturally, there's also this this fundamental missionary mandate if you are a Catholic Christian. If you are baptized, it means that you see the world or are called to see the world not only as the rest of the world sees it, but also charged with the grandeur of God, that each and every person that we see is actually made in the image and likeness of God, which means that they have something of God to reveal to us. And if we love God, we are going to love that which he reveals through this person. There's a line in the decree on the lay apostolate, apostolicum exuositatem, when they're talking about the kinds of formation we need in the lay apostolate, and it mentions that uh, it, it, this this formation for the lay apostolate presumes human formation, and included in that human formation is the ability to strike up friendly conversation. So this is this is bare bones what it is to be human is to be able to strike up friendly conversation. So that's a little bit of the why. People are interesting. You don't know what you're going to miss out on, except that you know that you're missing out on something. And we have a call to love our neighbor. If they're near us, they are, they are a neighbor. Uh, the nay part in older English has this quality of nearness to it. Near dweller or one who draws near. All right. The why, 
check the the how. I talked about this a little bit the last episode. I used to use a very silly sort of icebreaker. I, I would ask people, hi, excuse me, I'd, uh, do you have time for a couple of questions? They'd say, sure. I said, well, the first one is, how much does a polar bear weigh? Dot, dot, dot. Wait for them to look confused. And then I say, enough to break the ice. Hi, I'm Joseph. It, it, it starts the conversation. I abandoned it. I, I think it's a little gimmicky. I, th I, th I also think it's a little funny. I, I don't think it should be off the table for anyone that if you want to use it, you can use it. What I used for years and years, and I've always felt like it was a little bit off, I would ask people on introducing myself, I'd say, hi, I'm Joseph Gruber. What's your name? And then I'd say, what's your story? And what I have found is that the question, what is your story, is actually pretty confusing to people. Maybe we're not conditioned to think of our lives in a kind of narrative. Maybe because it's an unfinished story, we're deeply uncomfortable with that fact. It's just not a common question. So they would ask for clarification. What do you mean? What kind of story? And I would say, well, anything that has at least a beginning and a, a middle, I'll call a story. It could be story of your life, the story of your day, the story of what brought you here, whatever it is you like. It could be a short story that you're working on. Any story, that's yours. And because it needed so much clarification, I knew that it wasn't very good. I was at an event a couple of weeks ago, and I tried a little bit different of a question. And this is the one I'm kind of excited to share with you guys. I've got a I've got two variations on it. One is asking people, what's your background? And this one is fascinating because what, what, what people realize is this is their chance to explain how they got to where they are to me. And whatever background that is, it, it, it has all of these elements of, of a story. You know, I, when I was at this event, I, I would ask people, what's their background? And they would laugh which is not usually what they would do when I asked what their story was. And several of them said, well, my background uh, isn't anything like what I'm doing right now. And there was a kind of excitement about that. There was a kind of like, oh, my story has taken some twists and turns and I'm delighted. So I think there is something here that I just wanted to share with you, dear listener. That's why I have this podcast to share this with you, that asking people, what's your background or a different variation What's your backstory? This idea, we, we all have backstories. People don't usually have them. You don't usually get a chance to share them. And I don't know if you've ever tried any creative writing, any, any fiction writing. One of the exercises that you do is if you think of a main character, you think of their backstory. You think of what they had for breakfast that day, the kinds of clothes that they wear and where they bought them. You think about the kind of education they received, and the kinds of friends that they had. You fill in all of those blanks. You might fill out pages worth of notes about this character and their backstory. And then that all informs the, the character's actions, but almost never is fully revealed. Right? There's this exposition dump that creative writing teachers will warn you about. Don't overload the beginning of a story with all of the details about a character. And as an author, you're so tempted to do it. You're looking for a way to do it. And this is like a cheat. This is a cheat for the story of people's lives. If we ask them what their backstory is, then all of these details that they've been sitting on about what's been informing them, what's been uh, shaping them, they can then exposition dump. You're basically giving them permission to do what creative writing teachers tell creative writers not to do, which is to reveal whatever part of the backstory you think is going to be the most relevant for this chapter of the life that is being told right there and then. I think that's, I think it's good to cheat the system like that sometimes. I think it's hilarious. I think it gives people permission to reveal some of the things that they're working on. And I think it's a really neat way to open the door to where the, the relevant details from their life. And then from there to, 
to talk about whatever comes up, say, oh, that's really interesting, I've been to that institution, or actually I think we maybe have mutual friends, or we have all of these other kinds of points of connection or points of interest. And I think, I think, guys, I'm going to try this question for a few years. If you've known me in the past, oh, I don't know, I would say maybe nine or ten years, the question, what's your story, is one you've probably heard me say. If not to you, then in your presence. If you don't know me, and we get to a chance to have a conversation, I might just ask you, what's your backstory? What's your background? Because I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. I think these kinds of opportunities to, to engage with the other in a way that meaningfully and yet under their own control gives them a chance to decide how much they share, to, to meaningfully share what's going on. Now, there are other kinds of conversation starters out there. I think one of my favorite was, uh, would you like to have an interesting conversation? To go up to someone and say, hey, would you like to have an interesting conversation? And then bring up something that you're interested in and get their opinion. You can even couch it as, I'm going to ask you an opinion question, which means you can't get it wrong unless you lie, because it's your opinion. Um, I think that one, I was using that while I was an on-campus missionary for years and years. We would go out... Uh, at least once or twice a week, just going and meeting people. And uh, I would have teammates who would say, I don't really know what to say to people. And I would say, well, we were just discussing, um, like we read an article about leisure. I'd say, why don't you ask them what they think leisure is? Or friendship. You know, we would read uh, a chapter from a book on friendship. And I'd say, well, Ask them what they think friendship is. Ask them what they think happiness is. Ask them what they think a good life is. And then you get to have an interesting conversation because it's something that you've been thinking about and talking about with other people. And then you get a chance to invite a new person into that conversation and see what they do with it. And see if they're grappling with it. See if they have a ready answer. See if it's something that they ask you questions about. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was one of my favorite things we would go uh, when we were, when I was an on-campus missionary, uh, I structured the day and the week such that we as a team got together to read some formative material in the morning, and then from late morning to early afternoon, we would be out on campus just talking to people, having lunch with people, interacting with people, and the transition point from reading and, and discussing with people that we know to having discussions with people that we don't. I bridged that by saying, these are, these are questions that are totally fair game to ask other people. Don't let this just be like an insular topic that we talk about as, as a team. Go out and get other people's opinions. Go out and see, you know, if you, if you hold a position really strongly, see if it's, it, it's something that other people can get behind or if they think it's utter nonsense. Don't, don't be part of this little huddle that, that is sharing this formative time and, and not share it with other people. I think I've seen this a lot in different Christian circles, Catholic circles, people going into small groups and Bible studies and uh, going to workshops and maybe engaging with material while there, maybe talking about it with, with one's spouse, but then it doesn't really enter into the conversation with other people. So that's another how, is to come up with an interesting conversation piece, a topic that you've been reading about or thinking about uh, or hopefully talking with other people about, and then you're going and expanding that conversation with new people. And that way the, the new people feel drawn into a, a larger conversation and one that you are interested in, which means that you get to share an interest with a new person. I haven't been doing that one as much recently. And that's probably to my detriment, but it's a worthwhile thing. And this is a fun one to ask people, would you like to have an interesting conversation? Whether you know them or not, this can be a really cool way to get a conversation going. So why people are interesting, we don't want to miss out on them. There's also a missionary mandate to spread the gospel. We won't be able to do that without words. And so 
uh, we, we need to be able to speak words with people. Uh, how? I think there are silly ways to do it. I think there's this intriguing sort of cheat code sort of way of doing it, of asking what your background or your backstory is. And then there's this, like this invitational into interest sort of way of starting a conversation, which is, would, would you like to have an interesting conversation? I've been reading about, discussing, thinking about, listening to a book about, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on X, Y, Z. I think those three hows, find a gimmick, use the gimmick. You can use the polar bear one if you like. Asking about their story, their backstory, their background, or sharing part of the conversation that you're already taking part in, whether solo or through pre-recorded content like this, like this podcast. Ask other people, hey, how do you start conversations? I was just listening to a podcast about conversation starters, and I wonder you're a stranger. How would you start a conversation with me? Why not? What could you lose? You, you might find out they wouldn't start a conversation with you. You're like, well, duh, that's why we're here because I started the conversation. Probably that won't happen. Um, I, I think the, the question about what you've been reading recently, because so few people are reading, it can be off-putting for talking to a stranger. That doesn't mean it's off the table. It is, uh, it's a real question if you're really interested. Then the who, the, the people that you see, these are the people to start conversations with. If you don't know them, this is a great time to learn their name. Learn their name right off the bat. Ask them their name. Use their name in a sentence right after. Try to use their name several times in the conversation. Ask your guardian angel, please let me remember this name. Please help me to remember this name, write down the name after the conversation, whatever it takes, try to remember their name. And then they're not so much of a stranger anymore. The goal is not that nobody should be a stranger to you. There are, you know, billions and billions of people out there that you will always have strangers around you. Uh, also with the who, have genuine interest. If you don't have very much genuine interest in very many people, Odds are good. There's at least a couple that you have some interest in, and maybe you're afraid to talk to them. One of the things I noticed, we have a daughter with special needs. She's in a wheelchair. She has a, a gastric tube, so food is pumped directly into her stomach. And some people see that as a reason not to talk to us and not to engage with our daughter. And some people see that as a reason to ask questions. And I think overall, Unless we're like really busy with something, we prefer to have a conversation. So if somebody stands out to you and you're like, well, I couldn't talk to them about whatever it is that's standing out about them, like their tattoos or the way that they're dressed or their hair or their piercings. I don't know. They're, they're out in public, presumably. You, you, can, you can at least broach the subject. So... Yeah, people who are interesting, you find you're not very interested in other people, this is a very good reason to plunge more deeply into prayer. God is deeply interested in you. And oftentimes, if I don't even believe that God is interested in me, I'm having a hard time, I would be having a hard time to believe that he is interested in other people and has made them to be interesting. But the fact of the matter is, he is interested in me, he is interested in you, and he's interested in the people that you're going to introduce yourself to. So those are some conversation starters, um, some why, how, and who. I would love to hear about how it goes. I think there are different ways of doing this. We haven't really talked about the whole rating and reviewing thing in a long time. This has become a YouTube podcast as well. So if you like looking at people, I'm recording this in what could be our new office, though we may move it around. Uh, we're renting space and figuring out which space actually will work. Uh, but you could see that if you go on YouTube. Uh, you could subscribe, you can rate, review, comment, all of those things. These things are helpful. We, My wife and I were having a discussion yesterday, I think, and what, what we realized what we want to do is you know, we could talk about growing our audience. We could talk about, um, 
you know, trying to increase, you know, um, hours listened to or number of downloads. Like that, that feels one, like it would fuel my vanity and two, like it's um, really disconnected from what we're doing. Because fundamentally, my wife and I, we started a marriage ministry called Our Outpost Marriage Ministry. And it's basically to help husbands and wives become more confident and confident in running beautiful evangelical homes. And then anything ancillary to that are things that we're interested in helping with. Uh, And so we could talk about growing our audience, but I think what we would rather do is we would rather serve more people and to serve them in more ways. So we have a blog now. We didn't used to write blog articles. I've been writing blog articles. They're on ouroutpost.org. We have this podcast and another podcast called Love Your Marriage. It's a podcast for Catholic married couples. Uh, We are putting out more workshops live and local to our Jackson, Michigan home. And we'll be planning out some online workshops as well. Um, But yeah, so as far as like sharing episodes, as far as rating and reviewing, don't see that as us trying to quote, grow our audience, uh, see that as a way to help us to serve more people in more ways. We would like to serve more people in more ways. We want to find the people who would want to be served by us. I think that's a pretty like reasonable thing to look for in, in this world is to, is to find the people who want to be served by us. And you, dear listener, if you're at this point in the podcast, one, you're probably one of the people we would like to serve more or at least at this level. And then two, you probably know people that we would love to serve and who would love for us to serve them. So rating and reviewing, subscribing, and whatever other kind of word, those things. Uh, The other way, you can email us at hello at ouroutpost.org and let us know about what happens when you introduce yourself, when you start a conversation with someone. Maybe you use the polar bear one and you want to tell me how it went. I would be fascinated how that that would go. Uh, Then you might have used the what's your backstory, what's your background. Love to hear that, how that would go. Um, Asking people if they'd like to have an interesting conversation and seeing how that goes. I would love to hear about it. I really would. Uh, Another way for us to get feedback, I'm especially looking to talk to Catholic married men, aka Catholic husbands. This is in part to shape the the content that we're putting out there. It's also a a way to serve Catholic husbands in a way that's, I don't know, if another guy were saying, hey, you can have 45 minutes with me and I'm a pretty decent listener and I desire you to love your marriage more, I'd be like, yeah, I okay, yeah, I would sign up for that. Sure. Um, no strings attached. There are, there are things that we're going to be charging money for in terms of ministry. That That's not a big deal. Um, let's see. I feel like there were other things I wanted to include at the end, but I didn't note them down. So that's just going to be it. That's going to be the episode. Have fun conversations with people. People are strange and interesting. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are miserable. Some of them are this weird fluctuation between and and among and about those kinds of poles. So yeah, go nuts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Take my hand, let's be on our way. And now, finally, I can say that I love you. Yes, I love you. From our outpost to yours, thanks for listening. And a special thanks to John Mark Skoke. That's S-K-O-C-H. For the music, check them out on Spotify.